This is an L-shaped member, okay? L-shaped structure. This one here is a rotatable joint. Okay, this member B D is attached to this uh, member and this joint. So th th this one is free rotation. Okay. So at the top B C, one top uh, one, sorry, D C, okay, D C. There are also this kind of uh, rotatable joints as well. So see if I apply a force at here and on this member here, there definitely will be a top here. So that's why we need this member to resist this whole this double structure. So I wish to remind you again the three steps for doing force analysis. First question, ask yourself how many objects inside this system. Okay? So what are the objects? List down all the objects and doing free body diagram for each one of them. Okay? <laughs> then second step, you start analyzing all forces acting on this member. <coughs> so how do we find the possible forces is through all look at all these contacting points. The third step, you sum up all these forces on each individual members and all these movements at these individual members. Then you apply these two equations, very important two equations, and you get your answer. The three steps. You can just make some rough calculations, you don't need to write that in the, in the, in the class. Because I will send you the tutorial solutions later. Okay. So, the first question I want to ask you, how many objects are here? Thank you. 
equals to the P will be equals to the force here, right? Yeah. So uh, what you mean is there will be a force acting at this point P, and also there's a force of uh, acting at this point B upwards, and there's also a force acting downwards from this point P, correct? Yeah. Then these two force will balance each other, so that we can find this P, right? Yeah. Um, you will consider that, but I must tell you frankly that you missed, uh, you haven't included one important point. When we look at this member C, B, A, what are the contacting points might give it any force? Including C as well, correct? There might be a force from the C as well. So this C might join this whole process and to add up a vertical components. So that maybe there's a force from the C which is pointing downwards. There's force from B upwards. So this force C, force B, and the force P, okay, when they add up together, it's hard to tell how you can get your P, right? right? So whenever we consider, we do not only consider the force equilibrium, we also consider the moment equilibrium. That are the two techniques to help us to solve the next problem. Okay, so let's go back to our standard operating procedure. Okay, first thing we need to look at the objects here. First object is this number C B A, correct? Second thing is this number B D. These are only two objects we have in this system. Okay, so for number B D. Very straightforward, as I emphasized to you just now, the forces through this two point member, okay, where the forces only acting at these two ends will be, force will be in which direction? For the, for the member, <coughs> for member, okay, where the forces only acting at the two ends. Which direction will be the for will the forces be? The external direction, correct? Because there's no external torques. There's no ex other forces acting inside this number. So this uh, force will be only in XL direction. Okay. So for this member P D, it's very straightforward. <coughs> it's the member which is easiest for us to analyze. So from here, we immediately know that there's a force acting from B D to this number C B A, okay, which is acting in this direction, okay, which is acting in the axial direction. This is the first force that we find here so far. Okay. Second force is definitely the most obvious, the P. Okay. By the way, we are talking about the all, all we are talking about is this number C, B, A. We are trying to analyze all kinds of forces acting on this number C, B, A. Okay. So, so far we have analyzed first one is from is a force acting by this D, B to this number C, B, A, which is in the axial direction of D, B. Okay. What's the force is, as the question suggested, is 500 Newton. Here. The other force is the force P over here. It's in vertical direction and the, its magnitude is for us to calculate here. So what are the other possible forces? As we analyzed just now, there's a third, oh, there's a third contacting point, which is at the top, the point C. It's a contacting point of this member to the ground, correct? So there will be a possible force over there. Okay. So what is the direction of the force over there? We don't know, and we pretty much don't care. Because we can just use the moment analysis over here. We, what we can do here, we look at a point C as our point of analysis. We cover this point, okay? So no matter what point acting in this, acting on this point, or passing through this point, okay, the direction passing through this point, we can just ignore it. Why? Because the force arm equal to zero, correct? Understand? Okay. So here, the force C, because we are analyzing the moment at C, so we don't need to look at it. So the rest of the two forces 
P and this force DB are the two things we need to consider. Okay? So using the momentum e a moment equilibrium, summation of moment equals to what? Zero, Zero correct? Here, 